Hello, welcome to Build with Ben. In this episode, I'm going to break down how the Hogwarts castle changed over every Harry Potter movie. So I've realised from previous videos I've done about Hogwarts that people quite like me talking about this subject. So I thought, why not just break down how the actual castle has changed over every single film? Now, you might not think that Hogwarts has changed that much. And for the most part, it hasn't. But there are little additions that have been made in some of the films that actually do make a big difference to the layout. Okay, so we'll start off with Philosopher's Stone, or Sorcerer's Stone, if you're from America. This saw the creation of a massive 50-foot model. Now, this model was a practical full model, and you can actually see it on uh, display at the studio tour. The very first set I ever designed was, in fact, the exterior of Hogwarts. Stuart did some sketches of what he thought the castle should be, found the locations, and then, you know, it was up to us to kind of jigsaw them all together and make, a, you know, a whole out of it. From that sketch, we will do architectural drawings, which then will be handed to the carpenters, plasterers, model makers to create the full-size sets and miniature sets. Now, this model is what they used for filming most of the effects in the first High Power movie, and actually quite a lot of the subsequent films as well. And it's, uh, it's, so it's what the castle is really based off. It's the full, it's the physical version of Hogwarts Castle. And the model itself they did actually add to throughout the films. They changed things, you know, they added certain things to it. So it's not like they've used exactly the same model from Philosopher's Stone onwards. Now the interpretation of Hogwarts in Philosopher's Stone was actually based on a few real life locations. So a lot of the right hand side of the castle was actually based on Durham Cathedral. And if you look at the photos of Durham Cathedral and then compare them to the model of Hogwarts, you can see how they actually do line up. Now, I think the only thing they said was that they added sort of big spires and stuff to make it a bit more grand, a bit more kind of uh, imposing. They also based the Great Hall off a real life dining hall. And there's a whole kind of Quidditch area, which is based off Annick Castle. And then they actually filmed on location at Annick Castle too. So Philosopher's Stone, the castle, is kind of a blend of real-world locations and the model they built, which is inspired off those locations. This element over here was based on Durham Cathedral. Um, there was an element here that was based on Annick Castle. Um, this courtyard was based on Gloucester Cathedral. So each one of those formed the basis of the first model on Harry Potter 1, and then we kind of extended beyond those real locations. So one such real-world location was the Chamber of Reception. Now this was filmed outside the Oxford Dining Hall and it's the set of staircases you see them walking up to when they go into the Great Hall. So yeah, in Harry Potter this is called the Chamber of Reception and that's quite a significant thing that we'll get back to later in the video. Prison of Azkaban. Now this is where a lot of changes get made to the castle. I think it's mainly because the director, Alfonso Cuaron, had his own very specific vision for what he wanted to do with the film. I think he wanted to make it a bit more artistic, a bit more kind of gothic. So he actually added a lot more locations to Hogwarts, kind of expanded the castle outwards. So in this film, we get the first appearance of the Clock Tower Courtyard, and this whole area leads on to more changes and additions to the castle. So as well as the Clock Tower Courtyard, we also got the wooden bridge, or the covered bridge, I've seen it referred to a few places. And then the covered bridge leads to the Sundial Garden, which is where those big stones are, where Hermione punches Draco in the face. And then from there, there's a pathway which leads down to Hagrid's hut. Now, this is actually a new location for Hagrid's hut. Previously in Chamber of Secrets, it was near the kind of greenhouse section. However, in Prison of Azkaban, it's been moved to the bottom of this hill. And this is where I'm thinking that a lot of this is an artistic choice, because I think Alfonso Cram wanted somewhere, you know, a bit more of an interesting place to look at. And because uh, a lot of the big events in the film are happening around Hagrid's hut. And, you know, previously in Chamber Secrets, it's just a kind of green field. So it doesn't look very interesting when it comes to a film. Uh, but now having it on the side of a hill allows for a lot more kind of dramatic shots. You know, you've got nice shots of them looking down at Hagrid's where Bookby, get, Bookby gets executed, for example. Um, I think it's a good idea. And it's kind of a shame because obviously it is sort of a retcon of Chamber of Secrets, but it does look better. <laughs> and in universe, you could kind of say maybe Hagrid's moved his hood somewhere, you know. They also changed the location of the Whomping Willow. 
So the Whomping Willow in Chamber of Secrets, when they crash the car into it, is actually within the castle grounds. And it's sort of where it's that kind of Anik Castle area, that, that Quidditch training area. That was sort of where the Whomping Willow was, I think. However, in Prison of Azkaban, it's moved to outside of the castle. Now, imagine this change was made because if the Whomping Willow was inside the castle grounds, it would be very easy for them just to kind of run inside and get help. But the fact that it's on the outskirts of the castle, it means that there's there's that that logic problem is taken away. You know, they can't just easily go and get help. They're kind of stuck out there in the wilderness where the Whomping Willow is. So yet again, I think it's an artistic choice that was made and it does make sense for the plot. But for the overall logic of Hogwarts, it does seem a bit weird that an ancient tree has somehow moved location. But then they have magic, and magic kind of solves any problem in Hyvar. Another addition in Prison of Azkaban was the Dark Tower. Now you'll remember this is the tower that Sirius is trapped in at the end of the film. This was previously not seen, I don't think. I think it was literally made just to kind of solve the issue of like, where's Sirius? Can be held captive? And yet again, having it its own tower probably makes it easier for the plot to work. You know, if it was uh, the defense against the Dark Hearts Tower or something, you'd think, well, someone's gonna hear them breaking him out. Another change made in Prisoner of Azkaban is the Gryffindor common room is changed to the top of the Grand Staircase Tower. I'm not particularly sure why this change was made. Um, it might be because the painting of the Fat Lady, maybe they wanted that to be within where all the other paintings are, because she kind of interacts with the other paintings there. And if it was just in a kind of solitary corridor, you wouldn't be able to have a scene like that. So that might be it. I'm not sure. Yet again, it's a change I like. I think it it's nicer that the Gryffindor common room is up there. And also, from my point of view, I like it that the Grand Staircase Tower feels like it's leading to other places. So having new places that it can lead to, I think makes a lot of sense. Because you'd think, why would they have this massive area of staircases if they don't really go anywhere? And if you look at the tower from the outside, it doesn't look like they go anywhere. So I like the fact that they actually changed this. Goblet of Fire. Now there are a few changes made in Goblet of Fire. One of the big ones is they add an entrance courtyard or the viaduct courtyard. Now this is on the front of the castle and it's where the chamber of reception used to be. So those staircases you see them going up in Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets suddenly you don't see it anymore. Instead, there's a courtyard, and it's the entrance slash viaduct courtyard. Interestingly, the viaduct courtyard is actually just a redressed version of the clock tower courtyard from Prisoner of Azkaban. So they just used the same set, but they took out that bit in the middle and they kind of like redressed it a little bit. Another addition made to the castle is the Owlery. Now obviously the Owlery would have been present in the other films, but it was never actually seen, I don't think. I think for the first time it was added into the uh, Goblet of Fire version of the castle. After the Prince. Now, After the Prince adds a big change, and that is the Astronomy Tower. And it makes me laugh when you kind of look at how Hogwarts has changed for other films, because it feels like they they get to certain films and they kind of go like, oh god, we, we don't have the location for this whole plot. <laughs> you know, like with the Owlery, for example, from Goblet of Fire, or with Half the Prince, they suddenly go, oh, we need um, an Astronomy Tower for... Dumbledore to fall off, um, and they didn't have one. Uh, they could have pretended another one of the towers was an astronomy tower, that could have worked, but I guess they wanted a new, kind of big, dramatic location for this to happen. So the astronomy tower is added, but it actually replaces the Dark Tower and the Defence Against the Dark Arts Tower. So you never see those again. It's replaced, that where they are is basically where the footprint of the astronomy tower gets put into. But yeah, it was a necessity, you know, they needed somewhere for Dumbledore to fall off and they want to stick close to the book so they don't just want to make it a different tower. Uh, so it's a nice addition and it makes sense. Deathly Hallows. Now quite a few changes were made in Deathly Hallows and I think this was mainly to make the castle seem more epic, to have a fight in. Um, so, for example, the big one... <laughs> uh, and I've, sp I've done previous YouTube videos moaning about this, basically, which is why I'm laughing. They added a huge viaduct to the entrance courtyard. And this viaduct is the one you see most of the action taking place on. You know, it's the one where the trolls are charging down, that one. Basically, there was a viaduct previously, and it connected the entrance courtyard to the right-hand side of the castle. But they kind of took that viaduct and kind of rotated it around and made it lead to an empty field, which wouldn't make any sense. Why would they do that? 
But from the point of view of having an army invade, perfect. So we get this massive viaduct, um, and they also expanded the entrance courtyard. So previously it was quite a bit smaller, and they made it a bit bigger, and I think this is like just to make it more dramatic, just to make it more epic. One big change they made, which I never liked, was that they got rid of the moving staircases. Where they should be, they've replaced them with some giant stationary staircases. And again, I think they did this just to make the castle look more epic, but it's just, it's not the castle that I know. You know, it wasn't the one that I'd grown up with. And I found it a bit sad that they, you know, as someone who's a nerd about the layout of Hogwarts and the architecture of Hogwarts, it was sad that they didn't use Hogwarts as I thought of it. So I'm not going to talk about it too much, but in Fantastic Beasts 2, The Crimes of Grindelwald, they use the Deathly Hallows Part 2 version of the castle, despite it being a prequel, but that's fine. And I've done a whole video about this, <laughs> which you can see on a card or whatever. Yeah, so I'm not going to go over that again, <laughs> but it makes me annoyed because it doesn't doesn't work. Uh, they use the Deathly Hallows Part 2 castle when they should be using the Philosopher's Stone castle. And as I've said, there's been a lot of changes made throughout the films. So it doesn't make sense to use the Deathly Hallows Part 2 because it wouldn't look like that. It would look like how it did in Philosopher's Stone. There wouldn't be the Astronomy Tower, there'd be the Chamber of Reception, so the uh, entrance courtyard. There wouldn't be the massive viaduct from Deathly Hallows. Doesn't make sense. But anyway, yeah, sorry. I'm not going to talk about that. Watch that video. Now, personally, I think the castle looked best in Half Blood Prince. I think that's perfect. Like, from playing the video game of Half Blood Prince and seeing the film. Just jumping in here. If you enjoy that video of Hogwarts for other films, but I've actually built Hogwarts in Sims 4, and you can view that video now. So go over there now to check out Hogwarts in Sims 4. Hope you found this video somewhat interesting, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Building with Ben. Subscribe here for more coming soon.